Guys, Hassan Piker watched my documentary and he didn't like it. <laughs> We are going to be talking about that in more today, reviewing through our documentary, Unwoke Inc., which you can watch by going to the link in the description down below. Also, Hassan's original video is down below. But let's get into it. guys before we get into this video please like and subscribe i want as many people to find this channel as possible so you know what to do the hassan piker also known as hassan Abi, i guess on youtube has watched on woke inc which is a documentary that we released recently talking about woke corporations and companies and finding your alternatives to them i think it's a really prevalent problem right now that a lot of people are facing they're looking for companies that they can support that they can buy products from and while it might be convenient to go to you know kohl's or to buy your your glamour magazine or go to target People want to find companies that support their values. So that's what this documentary is about. Now, Hassan Piker decided to watch it on his stream and react to it. So we're going to get into this reaction. Let's see. Retail brands have the freedom to go woke. We have the freedom to create an alternative. Coming. Unite us. But what happened next? Okay. No one expected. Sports went woke. See that guy standing while everyone else is kneeling? That's Jonathan Isaac. <laughs> He plays for the Orlando Magic in the NBA. He also happened to be one of the few NBA players who publicly expressed discomfort with supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. This all came to a head when the players on his team decided to collectively kneel during the national anthem. So he did what he felt was right. He stood. Now, Jonathan is Bro, launching his own apparel company. I love this. This is literally, okay, okay, okay. Oh, never mind. He loves it. <laughs> Let's just cut the video there. Uh, we're done. <laughs> Let's wrap up. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Everything about this is like, it's so lip coded. You know what I mean? When I told you like everyone ultimately at the end of the day is a fucking liberal. This is what I mean. Like this could straight up be done by Vox.com. You know what I mean? It's the same messaging. It's the same language. It's the same editing. And the ultimate goal is the same as well. It's basically to provide an alternative brand, okay, made in the same fucking factories, probably even cheaper products, that is supposedly not woke. John I'm already confused. So because it's edited to similarly to something you might see in a Vice video, I think is what he said, that makes it liberal coded or makes it the same thing i would go out on a strong limb and say that the the messaging is is very different from what you would get from say a, a vice Jonathan is launching his own apparel company called unitas in hopes of bringing people together over love of god and country i should pause also and uh introduce taylor who's in nashville how did i forget that <laughs> oh hey it's okay it's a really tough and emotionally trying day today with yeah, uh, not having a son's approval so yeah it's yeah. It's there's been tears. Um so we've we've been dealing with that just as a as a collective. We also have Scott in the producers bay. What's up everyone? <laughs> We're going to get back into this. By the way, this was such a fun shoot. Uh I flew to Orlando to meet with Jonathan Isaac to film uh parts of his day, get to know what he was doing with Unitas. It was freezing cold, which is not normal for for Florida. I was freezing my ass off on this shoot, but it was a very very fun one. Unitas is a sports and apparel company, and the basis of it for me is freedom. You have companies uh -huh. that are in that field who have made a my least favorite my least favorite type of NBA players are these motherfuckers, bro. Like NS Contada and shit. You know what I mean? I don't know how good this guy is, but like weird that he calls up Ennis because isn't that the guy who spoke out against China and was like actively taking apart in talking about what's happening due to the CCP and the Chinese government and their use of slave labor in like the creation of your products and how it's maybe not something that you should support or at the very least you should be educated on. So that's a weird thing to just like not like him for, I guess. Yeah, who would support that guy? I just hate him. <laughs> right. Oh, what a piece of garbage. <laughs> Immediately, I suspect that they're not that good. If they're doing this, if they're doing this, they're trash. You know what I mean? So trash, you couldn't even do the dignified thing and go to China. You know what I mean? That's when you know. Go do the right thing. If you're decent enough playing the Euro League, if you're even worse, 
you know, or again, just go play in China, okay? Learn Mandarin, motherfucker. I don't want to hear this bullshit. I don't want to hear this like fucking anti-woke, woke nonsense, okay? I'm sorry. It's always like the shittiest guys that do it too. People always say like, oh, LeBron, his like political activism is bullshit. He should shut up and dribble. It's like, motherfucker, he does dribble. The only reason why you care about it is because it's LeBron, okay? Like he's still fucking balling. Same with Kyrie, okay? Same with fucking Kyrie. Kyrie is a great example of this. He's still balling, okay? He's still fucking balling. I'm just, I'm missing the point. I don't know if it's going over my head. I'm just not an intellectual, but I feel like the point has been just whizzed past me on that. Uh, yeah, I think it's something along the lines of if you're not as good as LeBron James, you're not allowed to have an opinion or seek you know, making a company that represents your values when you feel your values are not represented, right. something along those lines. Uh, if you're not good enough at basketball, according to, which by the way, uh, Jonathan Isaac is, I mean, he's signed to an NBA team. So clearly someone in the NBA wants him. Why would you go to China? I mean, I know that was just an effort to insult him and not really like a serious proposition on Hassan's part, but the, all of this, it just seems like a bunch of ad hominem and non sequiturs. I haven't heard him begin to, uh, uh, critically engage with the issue at hand uh, at all. And uh, I'm not, my hopes aren't high that we will. Yeah. Well, we have 20 minutes left in this video. So <laughs> here's hoping. <laughs> I won't hold my breath though, because that's a long time. We have companies uh -huh. that are in that field who have made a conscious decision to um, either attack or undermine Christian values, you know, conservative values and things like that. And I think that they have the free choice to do so. We can be proud of what we believe in. You know, we don't have to hide or be ashamed of it. As the day continues to get, you know, darker and darker and crazier and crazier, you standing up for what you believe in is only going to get harder, but it's only going to become more and more necessary. We'll find a way to end wokeism once and for all. Moving on. So much of the talk around woke seems to be just that talk. At the end of the day, nothing will change if those of us who- I love the conservative movement doing consumer activism and like spending a lot of time, energy and ourselves. initiatives on consumer but activism. Understand what can be done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so, bro. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate <laughs> that. When you have companies that are actively putting out messaging that is antithetical to your morals and values, it would behoove you to find companies that do support your morals and values, especially when it not only translates past talk, like these different campaigns of saying, you know, we support Black Lives Matter, or we support Pride Month or whatever, when it actually moves to your money that you give to this company being used towards an end that is antithetical to your political beliefs, i.e. giving to a nonprofit organization that are working towards educating children in gender studies and making uh, young children confused about their gender or offering them resources on how they can, you know, circumvent their parents and doing these sorts of things. That's just one example of where your money can possibly be going when you are supporting companies and corporations that don't believe in your morals and values. How many of these companies that you bought products from donated to the Black Lives Matter movement, which essentially just took all that money and what, threw it in the air and had a big party and bought some mansions with it? This is what we're talking about. It is actual tangible change that can be brought about when you decide to use your money in a way that is supportive of your worldview. That, that's basically it. So you can call that, yeah, consumer advertising, because yeah, it is. We are telling you, here are places that you as a consumer can go and sleep well at night knowing that you've given your money to this product. Not about it. We need to understand the world in which it originated. It's so funny. They're literally like, uh, what can we, what can be done about woke commodities? Um, that's right. You have to just buy our shit instead. Ooh, it happens to be the exact same <laughs> shit, except with a markup. Wait, it's what? called a stupid tax. That's what people are calling it. From the people that brought you pink tax, we've decided we are going to do an idiot tax. If you want to buy the exact same shit, it's even worse quality for a higher markup, come and purchase it from us instead. The middlemen. Awesome. Weird. It's just like ad hominem, ad hominem, ad hominem, at one after the other. And I don't know why I had recently thought of Hassan as being somewhat of a mature figure on the left. But upon watching this video, and I'm only about four minutes in, 
that's gone. <laughs> that viewpoint is gone. He has he has yet to engage in good faith about anything that has been shown here. And the reason that when you support a company that is going out on their own to create an alternative, and the reason that it might be pricier is because because a, a lot of conservative companies are making their products in America rather than outsourcing the labor to other countries like China. So that creates what? A markup in price. Also, it's very difficult as an individual to go up against some of these major corporations, oligopolies, monopolies. So in order to do that and still bring in funds and profit, sometimes you have to mark up the products that you're creating. Now, I don't know what he's talking about, about the products being lower quality. I think if, if anybody is going to create a business, your best interest is creating a good quality product. That That's what makes your business survive. It's not the morals, it's not the values, it's not the messaging. At the end of the day, it's the quality. If I buy a conservative product and it doesn't work, I'm not gonna go back to that company and buy that product. But what he calls an idiot tax is actually just the logical conclusion of creating your own company and especially creating one within your own country with workers from your country. So that's cool, bro. My first stop was to talk to the man who literally wrote the book on Woke. Here we are in Columbus, Ohio. Big L. The first questions, what is Wokeism? And where did it come from? Hi, Vivek. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, too. Meet Vivek Ramaswamy. He recently founded Strive Asset Management, an investment management firm that's challenging industry titans like BlackRock and Vanguard. He's doing it the old-fashioned way, focusing his investment decisions on excellence. <laughs> They're like, we hate BlackRock and Vanguard, so we chose to make our own BlackRock, but this time races. But before Strive, he... Again... There's just nothing there. There's almost nothing to respond to because he's not saying anything of of substance. I'm sorry. He founded a multi-billion dollar biotech company called Royvent Sciences. They were literally working to cure cancer. Until, at the height of Black Lives Matter, his board and employees demanded Vivek speak out in full support of the organization and the movement. Wait, are you telling me that this dude was on the cusp of curing cancer and then his employees were like hey black lives matter and he was like no fuck that we're done <laughs> like what kind of argument is this let's say it's real for a brief moment let's just suspend our disbelief and think that this is a real story that happened why would that actually make the dude that you're presenting look any better like he's just like yeah man it's actually the black lives matter protest that stopped me from curing cancer because I got pissed off that they were advocating for the black employees. Like, okay, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. You're a horrible person. Get back. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Conflating not supporting Black Lives Matter with being racist is just like, it's just astounding to me that you could hear that. I guess I'm a racist and a white supremacist, right? Because I would not, if a company or corporation urged me to stand up and say, I support this organization and what they're doing, which is essentially stealing money from people who are donating to them, rioting, looting, burning shit down, I would go, you know what? I'm sorry, but I cannot, with my own integrity, stand up and support this company. So if that's what you want me to do, I got to get out. I don't care what that company is doing. I'm not going to set aside my own integrity to lie towards an end that's not helping anybody. And I mean, needless to say, how many companies do you know that during the Black Lives Matter riots were screaming Black Lives Matter, supporting this organization? And many of those companies gave the money that you gave them for their products to Black Lives Matter. That's what we're talking about. That's where it's at at the end of the day. I'm sure that if Hassan Piker was trying to buy, I don't know, action figures, whatever's in the background of his, his room there, if he went to an action figure company and they're like, hey, just wanna let you know that a percentage of your donation is going to go towards a campaign that is anti-gender studies or towards a campaign that is pro-life, Hassan would go, ah, you know what? I don't think I'm going to buy your product. In fact, I'm going to go and look for an alternative because you are not supporting my values and I don't want my money being used towards that end. That's all that conservatives are doing.
and we can all exist in the same space, in the same market, in the same economy, having made those individual choices for ourselves. And even better, if you're going to take the leap of faith in creating an alternative that does that for people who are starving to find a company that supports their values. So it's, it's totally fine when the, the shoe's on the other foot, I guess. <laughs> Weird. Back to work and fucking cure cancer right now. With a clear conscience. But I stepped down as CEO. So he oh my God, he stepped down. Like it wasn't even like, uh, we're gonna do a struggle session here and, and, and it got in the way of cancer research or whatever. He just straight up was like, what? Black lives matter. They don't matter. I'm stepping down. Fuck cancer. He left the company that he created. Because of this experience, Vic wrote a book you might have heard of called Woke Inc. Yeah, dude, this kind of stuff always comes out later down the line. Like, I don't know what the fuck this dude's deal is, but I wouldn't be shocked if it was like he was sexually harassing the fucking, uh, you know, uh, college freshman interns that they had or some shit. And then he fucking stepped down for that reason. But then he was like, oh, it's because everyone's so woke. <laughs> Why do you... Uh, just a baseless... Not, I won't call it an accusation, just uh, insinuating something that is foul, foul, that you would never want to be insinuated of you or your character, and all of it because you simply disagree with his worldview. Just really boil that down, right? Because I know this guy's really respected within his leftist camp of people who watch him, but that's what is being said. And if somebody did that to somebody who you agree with, You'd have a bad taste in your mouth, but to hear it from somebody who you agree with, I guess people are people are cheering this on. It's really foul is the one word I have for it. I think this makes you look good. That's another question I have. I, I don't get it. Yes, I know. This is Squeaks running for Cold president. Ink. I think a lot of people are going to hear that and go, what's woke? Mm -hmm. So, Vivek, what, what's woke? Yeah, wokeness refers to being alert to invisible injustices perpetuated against disempowered classes of oh god i'm so mad oh no what generally defined on ge genetically inherited characteristics like race gender and sexual orientation basically it borrows from the tropes of marxism which was this oppressor oppressed narrative but wokeism was really was not just marxism it was the merger of marxism with identity politics the idea that you are nothing more and nothing less than the genetic stock that you inherit on the day you're born. This is a fringe philosophy. I mean, this was a theory from, from the halls of academia, and it was a challenge to the system. It was an interesting set of ideas. Does it mean it was all coherent? No, not necessarily, but it was interesting. It was provocative. It was a different way of looking at human relations. But wokeness at some point moved from being about being a challenge to the system to become oh he's like one of those he's like one of those guys he's one of those guys who's like oh wokeness was fine you know when it was like the civil rights movement but now it's not fine because somehow it got out of control so is there a problem <laughs> what if that was his stance what if that was his stance that the civil rights movement was something that was necessary due to the inequalities of of that time and in the current day and age, what is what wokeism has morphed into is something completely antithetical to what it would have been uh, when it was first being thought up. What if that was his stance? Would that not be a completely logical stance to, to have? And he just says these things and he just never substantiates an argument. I, I, I'm sorry. Taylor, do you have anything to say? You're kind of just like... you. <laughs> yeah, I just have a look on my face like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, he lost me at, at, uh, just the, the idea that the civil rights movement was woke. I wouldn't say that it was, uh, MLK was not someone that you would characterize as woke. He mm -hmm. appealed to our common humanity, a shared identity as children of God, a shared, shared identity, uh, as Americans and didn't focus on, uh, group differences between people. He, he sought to, for racial, racial reconciliation, uh, because of higher and deeper shared values. And that is not something that is characteristic of uh, what we call the woke movement today. So, uh, I, wokeness co-opted the civil rights movement, but it wasn't really the successful part of the civil rights movement at all. Yeah. I mean, you always hear people talk about his, his quote about content of character. That's certainly wokeism does not take content of character into, into account whatsoever anymore it's completely these superficial identity characteristics that they that they use and vivek talks about it right there he talks about just this uh genetic inheritance that you have and 
how wokeism place that places that in a, a hierarchical system, just like Marxism. Okay. Really, real quick. I think we got a uh, some volume. It's red, so I know it's above fifty dollars, okay. but it's in Argent. Tina currency, I think, okay. uh, from Batman TV. No message, but uh, thank you, Batman, for the super chat. For super chat, I really and greatly guys, we'll appreciate answer it. All, yeah, uh, we'll answer all super chats uh, above five dollars, unless it's like you're just a troll. But uh, five dollars <laughs> uh, at the end of the show, and uh, if you donate fifty bucks, we will stop what we're doing and read it. So thank you. Yep. Okay. And the origin story of wokeism, you have to understand academia first. That's where it was born. I was born as an infant there. Became Frank an adolescent born. somewhere else, but let's start with the infancy. Frank That's where it began. Say the Jews did it. At the end of the day, the rise of wokeism wasn't an overnight phenomenon. It's actually been in the works for years. So like many bad ideas, wokeism started in academia. But why? And why did- Why are they not saying it's the Frankfurt School? We know that's what you want to say. Just say it, man. Didn't it stay in the ivory tower? How did this cancer infect every other area of society? I needed to talk to somebody who understood academia and from a long-term, multifaceted perspective. And so I traveled to Washington, D.C. I love that, like, conservative commentary now straight up is just like, if you're educated, you're learning to be a homosexual Marxist and it's bad. Please stop getting educated do not do not read stop reading stop going to school it's bad for you i promise it's not good it's no good <laughs> dude i just can't even respond to this i just don't it's not it's almost not even worthy of a response i don't know what to say I, I, nobody is telling you not to get educated or that the institutions of academia do not have something to offer you i just think you better be well equipped with critical thinking skills when you enter academia to be able to decipher what is uh, true or what should be explored and what is bullshit which when you have these people who are more subservient to their activism than they are to the actual fundamentals to uh, of education and they're entering higher learning middle school kindergarten all these different things you just need to look out for people who are not using their position as an educator in the most good faith way, which unfortunately is happening a lot these days. I would love to hop on here and be like, you know, higher education and academia is in the greatest state it's ever been in in this country and everybody should go to college and everybody should go to university and that's what you should seek out. But uh, quite honestly, the quality of education that you're receiving for the amount of money that you're paying, which I'm sure Hassan would be able to agree with, does not line up, especially when you have this one-sided view to learning, which is completely devolved from what learning was supposed to be. You're supposed to challenge yourself to hear ideas that you are uncomfortable with. Have that Socratic method where you're bouncing back and forth, saying things that, yes, might ruffle feathers, might make you uncomfortable. And every time I go to a college campus, what I hear from students is that that is no longer allowed. You have a list of ideas that you are meant to believe. You even have students who are working on like masters, PhDs, and they're handing in papers to their professors that are in no way, shape or form what they think or feel, but they know the professor is looking for a certain set of ideas and that they will be failed if they do not subscribe themselves to the professor's ideology. When you have that sort of stuff happening on a college campus, mixed and combined with people not wanting to hear beliefs that are dissident to their own, students protesting when a conservative speaker, not even a conservative speaker, you have classically liberal speakers who are getting protested at these schools for not being adherent to their ideology. When you have this sort of stuff happening in the halls of academia where all thoughts and all feelings are meant to be explored and encouraged, then wh what do you say the state of academia is? Is that something you wanna pay, what, 50K a, a year? To, to subject yourself to? Probably not. Now, is the alternative to that not being educated? Absolutely not. We all here love, love to read books. Taylor and Scott are uh, obsessed with history. <laughs> There's many things to learn uh, to think that you need to be in uh, academia to, to do that is, I think, one of the reasons why we're in this mess. There, there's plenty of resources. Everything that these Harvard-educated individuals are reading or have access to, by the virtue of the internet, you now have access to it too. And you can read it and, and make your own judgments.
to a visionary. Real quick, we got another super chat from Nick Tyler, sure. uh, who says, this dude's giving us huge, we are all now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul energy from Billy Madison, which if you don't know that, that's a movie <laughs> quote from the movie, Adam Sandler movie. And I get it, Nick. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I'm losing brain cells simply by listening to this clown. Great documentary, guys. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> I'm glad you like the documentary, Nick. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, it's funny because while he might not like this documentary, it's been one of the most well-received documentaries we've ever created here at PragerU. So I think it speaks for itself. Something many people consider to be impossible. He founded a new college that now rivals the Ivy League. This is Michael Ferris. He started Wait, Patrick Henry College, a classical liberal arts college just outside of Washington, D.C. In only 20 years of the college's existence, Patrick Henry graduates have become leaders in the highest halls of power, including Congress, Hollywood, and the White House. And this sort of cultural impact was by design. Ferris has been fighting wokeism before it was even called. This motherfucker literally went and made a liberal arts university but like even more filled to the brim with like fucking nepotist uh, uh, fail children. Hold. Again, I just don't. Uh, who hominem, hurt you? Yeah, like who, who <laughs> hurt him? <laughs> Somebody did. Somebody had to. He's got some traumas. Wokeism. And more importantly, he's been winning. And I dare anyone to read my legal analysis. Through Patrick Henry College. Dude, oh God, look at this Vox.com ass fucking editing there. Look at this. And more importantly, you mean good editing? I don't understand. I'll fully grant that Vox has very good editing on their, their videos. I, I, is it meant to be a disparaging comment? I'm confused. Put a, they put a, a, a thug hat and the, and the thug life glasses on him. Look. Winning. And I dare anyone to read my legal analysis. Oh, dude, he's it's thug life, bro. <laughs> this 76 year old pervert is winning. He's thug life, dude. He fucking built a wasp academy. So here's from Vivek, a man that he disagrees with and insinuates that he is a pervert. He hears from Mike Ferris, a man who he disagrees with and he not insinuates, but just outright calls him a pervert. And this is like, this is an intellectual on the left, guys. This is one of the most watched streamers on Twitch. Granted, I hope it's more so for entertainment than education. <laughs> well, it has to be. This dude yeah. is like the first case of an adult that needs to be stuffed into a fucking locker, okay? Through Patrick Henry. Heck kind of yeah, ironic. bullying. We love bullying. <laughs> That's so it's so weird. I feel like conservatives get this caricature of being like mean spirited, cruel, dark people, but I'm just that's all that I'm seeing throughout this this entire video. Very interesting. College, Mike is taking the battle against woke to the source by educating new generations of students in a rigorous, truth-focused education. Where do you think wokeness <laughs> started? What's your what's your theory there? Where I was seeing it mostly was in the schools of education. They were at least Patrick Henry College is like doing one good thing, which is that like if you have these fucking millionaire billionaire wasp fail sons, um, at least taking them out of other colleges so they can only do date rape to other billionaire millionaire fail daughters is like in some respects, you know, from a utilitarian perspective, of course, a little bit better. You know what I mean? Like taking these guys and and um and and putting them in in a pen with one another is ultimately getting them away from the broader society. Teaching there is no I just want to mark that's number 3. That's number 3. <laughs> An insinuation of a sexual assault simply because somebody disagrees with you. That's really 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 wild <laughs> i just don't know how else to expand that's very wild and i will say i went to this campus to interview dr ferris met a bunch of their students seem perfectly nice like normal individuals and i'm sure if he met them he would find them to be perfectly normal individuals who just happen to have a different political opinion than he does astounding i know we don't often meet people with different opinions than us but they do exist out there and they don't bite but or date rape. What they meant is, we're going to undermine the objective truth that you believe in and pretend that all truth is relative. And we're going to follow that up eventually with our truth. And that idea is, now we're going to jam our truth down your throat and you better kneel. You raise a generation that's told at the university that nobody can disagree with you. You take that attitude to campus, you think that's the way the whole world should be like, and that's what you believe. That's the way you were trained. And you, you will not 
be a friend of truth. Uh. You will not be a friend of freedom. You're going to be a friend of repressing anybody who doesn't follow the party line. The tyranny that's in place today believes that the heart, soul, and mind of man belongs to government. And that mantra has been taken up by big corporations and social media giants and so on. And mm -hmm. that totalitarian impulse is the opposite of liberty or progressivism or anything, any of the, the traditional meanings of those terms. Mm -hmm. uh, our country was a liberal democracy. We are fast becoming a totalitarian, bureaucratically run country, not a democracy, yeah. not a republic. No, definitely. Ex I love how he just like, he sat through that entire explanation that Mike Ferris gave about totalitarianism and control and censorship, silent. Silent because there is nothing to say. It is happening. So curious to ha to hear. That for like when the photos that you were pointing to. That's the funniest part. Like when you were pointing to photos of like when we were a democracy, a real democracy, with like George Washington and shit. Like dog, that was when America was infinitely less a democracy. Okay, those guys were slave owners, man. That's crazy. That's crazy that you're looking at that and going, oh, like oh, the fucking look how democratic it was back. Oh my gosh. America had slaves? Guys, is it, America had slaves. Tell me right now. Tell me right now it's not true. Slavery didn't happen in this country. <laughs> Thank you so much for that uh, just beautiful, poignant piece of education. I think everybody understands that. I don't think anybody's trying to omit the fact that America had slaves. I think what they're talking about is maybe the fundamentals that were discussed in the creation of this country and keeping those and conserving them and keeping them alive in the current state of our democracy. You know, those tenets of remembering the, the minority and not allowing them to be overshadowed, the tenets of maybe allowing all citizens to have a, a voice in the way that their country runs, the tenets of having freedom of speech and, and freedom of religion and freedom to just explore ideas without the risk of all the other issues that we're, we're dealing with right now with censorship, deplatforming, ostracization, all this stuff. Uh, maybe that is what they were referring to by showing you those pictures. But no, because America had slaves, all is lost, right? We just scrap that entire period of history. There is nothing to be gleaned of it. There is not a single piece of, of wisdom to be gleaned from that period in time in the United States of America because there was uh, enslaved people, right? So let's go, let's go all throughout history. Look at the periods of, of times where people were enslaved which is still happening to this day, albeit not in the United States of America. Well, honestly, still in the United States of America with, with sex trafficking and all this stuff. But so we're going to scrap any pieces of wisdom or information that we've gleaned from these times because slavery is still happening right now. That's how it works. Back then when uh, the country was run as it's intended by white male slave owners, uh, what the fuck? So you teach a generation that truth is subjective and ever evolving. You brainwash them to accept no alternative viewpoints. It's the woke way or no way. And then you release them into every industry of our society. Every motherfucker that acts like truth is objective buckles like a, like just absolutely folds. The moment that you start investigating deeper into what they believe and why they believe it. The moment that you like arrive at the conclusion that like, oh, it's because the Bible said so. You go, okay, that's your personal interpretation. And you- Oops. Oops. You messed up there. <laughs> uh. Not religious. So the Bible is not my my basis for figuring out uh, what the truth is. So I'm, I'm curious what he's going to say there because that's a really just a big leap and a big accusation to throw out when it's uh, in fact not the case. Oops. You it's also kind of a projection because when you look under the hood of how someone who rejects objective truth thinks and what the basis of their worldview is, it's a bunch of self-contradictory nonsense that is dictated by feelings and yep. uh, you know the whims of opinions of the day or whatever totalitarian cultural forces are at work it's not uh something that holds up to much scrutiny so i feel like there's a little bit of projection there it's much easier to defend and have a worldview that is coherent uh when it is staked on objective truth and objective realities than it is not and i think like things like the what is woman documentary illustrate that beautifully yeah, I wonder how he felt about that one. I'm sure there's a video of him watching it somewhere, and I am not going to subject myself to that. Uh, 
just putting that out there. And how fucking subjective their truth is, you know what I mean? It's the Jordan Peterson conundrum. Jordan Peterson does this shit all the time. He loves, back when he was like at least LARPing as a liberal, he loved trying to use the Bible as the objective truth while simultaneously saying it's just simply uh, a, a understanding of the of the symbolism within the Bible. Like understand, like our, our universe is, is uh, dictated by the same principles that keep reinforcing itself uh in our art and in our culture and in you know religious dogma as well we'll Perhaps try the again most pernicious infiltration the indoctrination tool for the masses entertainment oh man for years everyday americans have complained about woke hollywood yeah totally that's what that's what americans are always complaining about yeah Totally. <laughs> that is what Americans are always complaining about. I mean, I don't know. Check out any movie that's been made in the last, I don't know, five years and look at the common threads and common changes and the just blatant activism that Hollywood feels the need to throw into their, their movies. And people are catching on and commenting on it and keeping a keen eye for entertainment that does not uphold their values. So, yep. Yeah. Thank you for confirming. But we're not here to complain. We want to create alternatives. So I decided to talk to a man who is doing just that, creating an alternative to Hollywood and multiple other industries. That is not, oh my God. Wait, that's not the man we're talking. It's, this is the, this will never not be funny. You know how we make fun of uh, people on TikTok for having fake podcasts? Brett Cooper, has a fake Twitch stream where she acts like she is doing a Twitch stream when she's not. They just shoot it in a fucking studio. It is mind boggling to me that people just think like, oh no, this is great. Me? What? <laughs> I'm so confused. He is sitting in his room in his home, presumably, right? And he's got a camera and he's got a mic and he's streaming. It's the same exact thing that Brett does. She just does it in an office and that invalidates the work that she does. I'm so very confused. I think maybe what's happening is He's upset at the rate at which she's been able to accomplish what she's accomplished and the fact that she has just completely taken over uh, the the YouTube space for for young conservatives while being resourced. Is that what you're upset about? It's kind of like those people who are like, you know, I had to work so hard to get where I am right now. And now the kids just come in and they have their cameras set up and they have a microphone given to them and they didn't even have to pay for it. It's just like, OK chill out <laughs> there's there's space here for all of us even the people who work in an office <gasps> scary Very boring jeremy is the co-founder of a media and entertainment company called the daily wire they push buttons they tell the truth and they're working every day to create both news and entertainment that is free from liberal bias in many ways big media has become just a propaganda arm of the left and daily wire Media has always been a propaganda arm. The left, not so much. I wanted to correct that. <laughs> Welcome back. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. It's always been a propaganda arm, but not one of the left. Are you are you serious, right? Um, if you're an actor, we live in LA, right? Okay, so if you're an actor right now in Hollywood and you're going to auditions, which one are you gonna feel more inclined to be? Openly liberal or leftist or openly conservative? I'll let you guys answer that question. I know what the answer is, and it's because Hollywood subscribes itself to leftism. That's what they accept. They do not like conservative actors, actresses, which is why we all know that actors and actresses who are conservative, producers who are conservative, even directors who are conservative are sh silent about it. Because they know what happens if you if you're outspoken about your your beliefs and they are dissident to the accepted set of beliefs. They're done for. Not another job. Their career's over. Their passion's over. And it's in nearly every creative industry in this country. We produce written articles, news articles. We produce podcasts. We're the fifth largest podcast publisher in the world. But beyond the Daily Wire, we've expanded into something we're calling Daily Wire Plus. And it's really a broader cultural yeah it's a cultural revolution folks like when we hired gina carano and then put her in a movie and then filmed that movie and then that movie got uh an opening weekend to 800 people watching it that was the biggest cultural revolution man if i took a shit and fucking uploaded to my instagram that'd be a bigger cultural revolution by this by by your metrics of success okay
Again, like, where's the point? <laughs> a, a media company that is just getting its footing in creating movies, doing so, and trying to do so at the same production level as big Hollywood and all of these major corporations puts out one movie and it doesn't perform at the same rate as the ones that are put out by Hollywood. <laughs> and that's somehow a problem. Yeah. And to denigrate their cultural impact when this last weekend, the Daily Wire put the What is a Woman documentary on Twitter. And I don't know how many hundred million views, I think 150 million views it yeah. got. And I think it's also the number one streaming film on all of Rotten Tomatoes right now. So uh, to denigrate their impact as, as saying that they're not having any cultural influence is uh, just ignorant and silly. Right. And he's like, oh, I could take a and post it on the Internet and it get more views. I thought that's what we were already watching because your content is questionable. Hollywood going woke is pretty easy to see coming, but what happened next, no one expected. Sports went woke, <laughs> but it didn't end in sports. We all know the story. It felt like the flip of a switch, like every company in America was suddenly spouting the woke orthodoxy and anyone who disagreed with them was ousted, condemned and silenced. A perfect example? Dude, I wish, man. Where? Like, I wish we could silence some of you motherfuckers, man. You never shut the fuck up. Amanda and No response. Let's okay. see. Who's Amanda Ensign? Who the fuck is this? <laughs> it's just like you can feel you can feel that he wants to hate something before he's even heard anything or decided how he feels about the statement that's being made. His viewpoint is already done before he even started creating the video. And and that's a problem when you are doing content like this. I mean, it's fine, people like it, they watch it. I'm just saying from an intellectual standpoint, not the best space to be in when you're supposed to be giving a, a true and well thought out opinion to just already have it formed before you've even taken in anything that's been said. Sure, in the environment, but they don't do anything. We need to be creating our own verticals and our it's so funny. It's like every time they do like an alternative, it it literally is like a shittier version of something that exists already. It's like, <sighs> oh, do you want Ariana Grande? But like Ariana fucking Venti, dude. Here, here you go. Like, there you go. It's like, no, no one wants Ariana Venti. You want Isn't Venti bigger than Grande at Starbucks? Yes. <laughs> uh, just to know. That's just a thought that popped into my mind. Um, but anyways. As I said before, if you're going to go out and create your own product and you are, I don't know, rivaling, let's take Daily Wire for as an example, right? They're creating a streaming service that has entertainment and content for people. Who are they rivaling? Hulu, Netflix, Disney Plus. Do you think that somebody who's just going out and creating an alternative to a company or corporation that has been around for hundreds, if not just uh, decades, right? Could be hundred years, could be decades. Do you think your content is going to completely match up to what it is that they've been creating and crafting for decades? Probably not. But if you never try, and if you never get into that first year of creating whatever your alternative is, you better believe you're not gonna make it to the 50th year or the 70th year. So to say you, the product that you first started out with is not the best product and it's not as good as the ones that I can get from the monopoly is again, right. not an argument. And Jeremy made this point in your interview with him on Friday, Jeremy Boring, CEO of Daily Wire. He said that their, strategically, their goal is not necessarily to go toe to toe with these massive companies and try to get equal market share as them or anything like that. But it is to give people enough of an alternative to take away enough market share to where they have to come back to the table and reconsider and say, oh, are you guys going to stop buying our chocolate, buying our beer, buying our uh, movies and films uh, if we continue to push this prop? propaganda or to take sides in all these political arenas and shove things down your throat that you're not asking for. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't we can't just do that because they have an alternative now to go to. And that's a huge uh, notion with the strategy. So Daily Wire is open about the fact that they're not trying to, you know, go toe to toe and be the next, you know, giant film studio or anything like that. But they are trying to create alternatives for people and every opportunity that they can. And, and I think that that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, just uh, would you rather just nobody ever try to do it or nobody ever go out on on that venture, especially as somebody who obviously he says he's a leftist, right? I think does he identify as a socialist? I think it's I think so. Or democratic socialist. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to go get into all that. But 
if you the shoe was on your foot, right, and you're dealing with conservatives who are constantly throwing their messages in the products that you're buying, you would want left-leaning alternatives or at least neutral alternatives to support. So to just completely not acknowledge that that is the case, especially when we're about to inch into a future where everything is owned by these massive like BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, and leftists are going to be singing the song of wanting alternatives. And maybe it's not on a political basis because BlackRock and Vanguard, for the most part, are supporting ESG and left-leaning campaigns and stuff like that. But it is going to be on a concentration of power and money basis that they are going to be screaming from the rooftops, we need alternatives to these massive corporations and companies. So when I hear that, from somebody like Hassan, which we will in the future, if not, if he's not already saying that, I'm not going to come to him and, and degrade the message that he's putting out. That'll be a message that I'm in full support of. And I am in full support of left-leaning people supporting companies that value their political opinions and are pushing towards that end because you have every right to do it, just like we do on the other end of the spectrum. On Ariana Grande, like, shut the fuck up. It's so stupid. And the entire point is this, okay? The entire point is this. If these people can make it on the the virtue of, like, their content working in and of itself, they wouldn't have to fucking literally go and, and uh, do this dumb shit. Their vector wouldn't be politics, right-wing politics specifically, but politics in general. It's so weird. Okay, so you have Vivek, who had his major biotech company, is now making his asset management firm, has nothing to do with politics, just happens to be passionate about that and is injecting that to what he does now. You have Amanda Ensing, who was a very popular makeup artist and beauty guru on YouTube prior to ever getting political, had over a million subscribers, has hundreds of thousands of followers all across her platforms on the internet, got political because she was canceled. And now that's part of what she does. You have Jonathan Isaac, who again was not a political figure, just a guy who was very successful, got signed to the, the the NBA working for the Orlando Magic became political because the Black Lives Matter movement. And in all of these cases, you have people who were successful based on their own merit and their own excellence, but were then pushed into political uh, speech and activism based on what? Woke indoctrination and woke people coming to them and saying, you must believe this. So it's not people who can't be successful on their own suddenly getting into politics in order to give themselves a boost. It is in fact quite the opposite. It's people who were successful in their own right, but decided, you know what, I'm going to set the success that I'm gaining in this arena right now to stand up for who I am because I am being threatened for being who I am. And that is quite literally the point of this documentary, which only tells me that he has not listened to a single thing he's heard while watching this. And again, he came in with his viewpoint and was ready to espouse it before he watched the documentary. So there you are. Okay, myself included, if I could be a fucking funny man and rest on the laurels of my humor, I wouldn't be talking about this politics shit, okay? I unfortunately am brain dead enough to love politics a little too much, but anyway. We're and that's another point, all while loving politics himself. So now you have all of these people who are, yes, now in invested in politics. Amanda Ensing is making her conservative brand. Uh, Jonathan Isaac is not even really making a conservative brand in his clothing. It's more of just like a pro freedom, his his own Christian values that he's supporting. Mike Ferris with his like Christian conservative based college. And then Vivek now who's starting Strive and running for president. So all of these people, much like Hassan, recognize that they have an interest in politics and standing up for their own political beliefs and decided to do that on their respective platforms, which is actively what he's doing right now on Twitch. <laughs> it's just so hypocritical. Where the fuck were we always? This is Amanda Ensing. She's an entrepreneur, a beauty influencer, and a general badass boss lady. She started out beauty influencing with sponsorships from Sephora and other huge makeup brands. But when armchair critics started criticizing Amanda for stating her personal political beliefs, Sephora immediately canceled her- Cutting ties with pro-Trump beauty influencer Amanda Ensing? Yeah, man, it's Sephora. Yeah, they're making a business decision. Hey, guess what? You wanna know why no one fucking heard about this Sephora boycott? Because conservatives were already boycotting Sephora by not being like gay men or girls who go to Sephora. Conser There's no conservative women who shop at Sephora? What? 
I'm just so, he just doesn't have anything to say, but talks <laughs> anyways. Okay. Was there even ever a Sephora boycott? I don't think there was. I think he just made that up. No, he, yeah, he literally did just, just make that. He's just saying that conservatives wouldn't typically go to Sephora anyways, even though he's not a woman. So I'm assuming he would not know this. There are very limited options that you can go to. If you want to find a makeup store, you essentially have Ulta and Sephora. So yes, conservative women have been shopping at Sephora. Sephora is one of the largest makeup brands uh, and makeup stores in the whole of United States. I think they make billions of dollars. So plenty of conservative women shop at Sephora. Barb's boycott at Sephora. Now that's when you got a, a labor action, okay? That's when you got momentum. What fucking like Trump supporter is, is, is going to Sephora and be like, yeah, I can't wait to get me some of them cat eyes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh. What? What? <laughs> If anything, I feel like conservative women are wearing more makeup than liberal women are. Liberal women are like abandoning beauty and all that stuff or whatever. Who's shopping at makeup stores is probably conservative women. And one of those major makeup stores would be Sephora. Oh my gosh. I love me some of them. Her sponsorships and went so far as to publicly condemn Amanda. So for me, I was like, you know what? The beauty industry is in shambles. It only caters to one party, one set of views. Let's create my own brand. Our first launch sold out within like a day or two. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> they, they shouldn't. Those shades are way too. Those shades are way too dark for your fan base, lady. Okay. <laughs> Their her skincare goes up to like her her uh, her concealer goes up to only like white and palest white. I was just like, how? What? Mm, whatever. And just seeing how much women wanted this, I was like, wow. And I was scared, you know, it's terrifying putting your story out there. And when you get canceled and with all of these people now coming for me, it is, it's, it's scary at first to take that first leap. But once you do, you just don't stop. Every single one of the people we interviewed is a perfect example of not just what fighting back looks like, but what winning looks like. Yeah, they're literally just like, <clears throat> they're just straight up like, oh man, we just, all of these institutions are liberal. Let's make competitive ones by just saying that these are not woke. That's it. I'll give you one of the insights. Yeah. <laughs> you got it, buddy. <laughs> He's finally catching on. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> For my investing days, it's a famous quote from Warren Buffett. Be brave where others are fearful. Okay, so first of all, Warren Buffett <clears throat> woke. Um, secondly, if this guy is like investing in companies purely on the fundamentals and not like what their corporate brand's uh, strategy is, which by the way, I laugh at any fucking donkey-brained idiot who thinks that like <sighs> BlackRock Capital is actually focusing on how woke a company is and not what their fucking, not what their returns are, okay? But like, if he's only looking at the fundamentals, then- Oh gosh, it's just like, tell me you don't understand without telling me you don't understand. Oh my gosh, there's so many elements to this. Not only do you have, you know, BlackRock growing to a point where they're just like buying up any company that's doing well. It doesn't matter. Those companies will still engage in this sort of woke activity. They're still giving to woke charities. They're still giving to woke nonprofits and to organizations that are carrying out the political means and lobbying of left leaning, the left leaning agenda. So it doesn't really matter whether or not uh, BlackRock is looking for, for woke companies. That is, in fact, what they have. You also have ESG, where BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, they're all being incentivized to have companies that are beholden to this agenda. And I'm not going to get into the depths of ESG and break all of that down. You've heard me talk about this many times on the show. But Vivek, in his drive management, what I deduce that he's doing is looking for excellence, right? He's not just looking for conservative messaging and companies that are putting it out. You would also want a good product or just generally neutral companies that are putting out a good product. What he means by looking for excellence is that we're not going off of these superficial identity markers. We're not doing the affirmative action hires. We're not doing the diversity quotas. We're in fact functioning as a meritocracy, the way that we were meant to function, which is judging these companies based on their merit and then deciding to work with them. And just as a to put a button on that, uh, literally this week, uh, a video resurfaced and is going viral on social media on Twitter of BlackRock CEO Larry Fink uh, saying basically that they admitted they're using ESG to force companies to hire based on diversity and that he talks about the need to be able to coerce 
these companies to do what they want them to do. So they're not just looking at the bottom line. They're not just interested in profitability. They are using these uh, ESGs and these methods to coerce companies into being woke. And I will pull up that video if we can. Did you send that in? Okay, this thread here. Let's find the video just so you guys can see it for yourselves and hear it because we need the receipts. It's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force <laughs> behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team. You have to force behaviors, whether it is gender or race. Did you all hear that? Did everybody hear that? I just want to make sure I'm not fucking Looney Tune hearing this right now, that I didn't just imagine this, okay? You're going to be impacted, and that's not just not recruiting. It is development, as Ken said. How do you force change, though? I mean, Larry, BlackRock has, has really been in the forefront of the ESG movement within, within corporate governance and a real leader, and yet change is so slow. So what is, uh, and, and Ken as well, what... what how do you force change? The companies aren't going woke so fast enough. We need to force it harder. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, how do you do something more radical? Have you thought about that? Has the board of American Express thought about more radical things we could do to enhance diversity <laughs> and inclusion? <laughs> because it has to be imbued in the culture of a firm. It has to be mm -hmm. talked about. It has to be shown. Behaviors across the entire firm in every region have to be similar. And every citizen of the firm has to understand what is acceptable behaviors and what are unacceptable behaviors. Oh it's my gosh, just put some horror music over that or some like, you know, sci-fi villain music behind that and you've got it. Every member of the, of the company needs to understand, you know, that what is good behaviors and what is bad behaviors. Oh goodness. I just want to hear Hassan say one more time that BlackRock is choosing companies based on their, their profit, not off of wokeness. I want to Mentals. hear that. And not like is like investing in companies uh, strategy okay. is, which by the way, I laugh at any fucking donkey brained idiot who thinks that like BlackRock capital is actually focusing on how woke a company is and not what their fucking, not what their returns are. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Donkey brained idiot. Ah, just had to put that out there. Okay, I'm glad we've got the, the fact check in real time on that one. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay, but like, if he's only looking at the fundamentals, then wouldn't he be straight up only investing in established brands? He's talking about Warren Buffett, for example. Like, that's Mr. Coca-Cola. That's Mr. Safety. Warren Buffett's entire... What are you gonna say, Taylor? Well, just another perfect example of this is the Bud Light situation. Mm -hmm. You know, their revenue crater, their stock value crater in the wake of the Dylan Mulvaney controversy. And then what did they do? We covered it on the show last week. Immediately doubled down and donated another what was it, two hundred thousand dollars to some woke uh, gender activist, uh, Jen Singh, I think. And so there's your proof. There. Yep. The marketing, the embracing of the wokeness uh, hurt their brand. And rather than course correcting and trying to reconnect with their consumer base, they are so beholden to ESG that they double down on the wokeness and give more money into it. So yet another just fact, live fact check that this is, how can you be so wrong on this? Right. And what happened? An LGBTQ organization said if Bud Light does not double down and, you know, reinvigorate their support for Dylan Mulvaney, we're going to lower their score in compliance with ESG. <sighs> Fucking portfolio resembles like the most I mean, it's the Fortune 500, you know what I mean? So, so, so doesn't that mean you're going to be doing the same thing? So you're just trying to be, you're just trying to be fucking BlackRock. Because I'm willing to bet this motherfucker is not investing in like the, the anti-woke Sephora or whatever the fuck. If he's only caring about the fundamentals. There is an economic. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. Because as, as you've done so plainly throughout this video, you just make statements. <laughs> you just make really bold statements. Economic opportunity. I think it might be one of the biggest economic opportunities of the next decade to serve the 100 million plus Americans from the places where they work, where they shop, where they bank, where they invest. These are also- I just don't think anyone cares. Like, I don't think, I don't think liberals have ever been like, oh man, I'm so glad Bank of America loves homosexuals. You know what I mean? Like, that's the difference. These guys are literally like, oh, dude, we have a banking system, but like, if you're gay, we call you the F word. You know what I mean? Oh, sick. That's definitely where I <sighs> want to go.
Like, it, it's just so stupid. They looked at, like, vague, ambiguous uh, uh, mentions of, like, certain marginalized identities with no real solutions whatsoever and literally thought that's the reason why Libtard shopped there and conservatives will go and shop elsewhere for the same reason. No, man. It's <sighs> convenience. And also, you know what's the most convenient thing? Being a fucking monopoly, okay? So you know, you're not taking down Mondelez International because you decided to go to the same factory where they make the Oreos and be like, my Oreos, on the other hand, look identical, but like that are actually fucking racist, you know? It doesn't work that way. From an economic it's standpoint, not saying anything some of, of the best substance. customers that any business could want. That is an economic opportunity. It might be the economic opportunity of our generation. Academia is bad uh, because it grooms children unless we are the ones who are doing the grooming and then it's good. It what? What? There's just so many jumps and jumps and jumps. We want a bank, but we want it to be racist. We want a bank to call you the F word or whatever. That's not at all. If anything, I think the future would be neutral companies and corporations, but unfortunately we don't have that because yes, left-leaning people do give in to corporations and companies espousing their political beliefs. And it's interesting because I think he used Bank of America. Isn't Bank of America or, or was it American Express, the one who was actively saying, you know, we're gonna prioritize people of color in our loan process and what we do financially. So they're not doing it for no reason, right? They're not saying these things for no reason. It's incentivized by the government. It's incentivized by the consumers and the left-leaning consumers who like that their companies are espousing their values. And that is the exact reason why so many people all across the United States and other countries right now, honestly, it's a shared experience in other countries as well, are looking for alternatives, alternatives that are neutral and alternatives that support their values so that they can sleep soundly at, at night knowing that, you know, when you go and buy, I don't know, a freaking microphone from Walmart or, or Target, that maybe a little piece of the money that you gave them is not going towards, you know, organizations that are endorsing the transition of children. It's not going towards Black Lives Matter. It's not going towards the complete and utter degradation of uh, conservative belief in this country. And that's where we'll land on this uh, Hassan video. So crazy. Three insinuations of sexual assault from some of the guests that were shown in the documentary. Zero substantive arguments. So. But we did learn only gay men shop at Sephora. Yep. yep. And that BlackRock is not involved in ESGs, even though there's a video of their CEO saying we're using ESGs to force companies to uh, be woke. So there's so that. We learned a lot today. I learned a lot. I learned that I'm never going to watch this content ever again. <laughs> I know a lot of people are like, how are you? Why are you putting us through this? There's a reason we've never gone here, I guess. I'm learning it today. There is a reason, but, and man. I have learned it today. And um, to be fair, like, I think there's definitely, you could find on the right a similar, you know, the mirror image of this, where of course. it's like echo chamber thinking, hate watching everything, just here to be mad at the world and super cynical and, oh, let's just crap on the left the whole time. And it's, you know, I think it's it, it's worth saying that the goal is to not be like this on either side. It's to be a free thinker, to not be dogmatic, to be engaged with people in good faith. And, you know, we try to be honest about our leanings and where our bias is as well as we can. But yeah. like you're going to hear real discussion and trying to get to the substance where we want to actually understand what the other people who disagree with this actually believe so that we can you know find those areas of disagreement and make strengthen our own arguments and change our minds if we need to but like that that's that sh should just be a common sense decent thing but it's 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 hard to find on the internet these days so i don't nothing in me enjoys like just you know, taking pot shots at, at Hassan or his audience or anything like that. But I just, it's like, I feel bad for you, man. It's like someone, someone hurt you. Like, why are you so angry at the world and it, it boxed into this, this way of thinking? And I really, I don't know. I hope uh, that they, they find a way to uh, get out of the echo chamber. Yeah. All I learned is that he really hates conservatives. So yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah. We're going to get into super chats. <laughs> Let's. Do it. Well, hopefully there's some uh, palate cleansers in here today. Um, but let's see. First one we got. Wow, there's a bunch. I got to scroll down quite a ways. Okay. Uh, Bet, Bet Zaida Flores says, I lose brain cells when this guy speaks. I don't understand the appeal of Hassan. Well, yeah. I think I've seen greater moments from him than this that's video. True. 
I'll do that. Maybe we should play a Hassan highlight reel. Yeah. (laughs) I'm good. (laughs) Next time. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, Text Broad says, do you guys know how the teacher sounds every time she speaks in Charlie Brown? That's what I hear. Blah, blah, blah. El Hassan, read a book and get more intelligent before dissing on (laughs) Amla. Racist. Pervert. Uh, thank you, text fraud. Rudy says, why are we watching Joe Biden in a suit, a.k.a. making no sense? Yeah, there was not much, much, uh, much sense made here. But not he didn't fall down. So there's that. So crazy because he's like, obviously, he's he maybe doesn't have his own company. I don't know what he does, but he's a very successful leftist streamer who is essentially selling a product. And that product is entertainment and it's entertainment bent towards the left, which is exactly what anybody who's creating a lipstick or an asset management firm or whatever that is bent towards their views is doing. So he's doing exactly what he claims to hate. So cool. <laughs> That's all I can say. For, for cool. a socialist, he's great at participating in capitalism right. and profiting from it. Right. Um, uh, Dixon Butts says he clearly doesn't have an argument or a point. He knows he's supposed to hate on this, and that's it. Bunch of nonsensical buzzword to feed his audience. I feel like we'll get a few more of these comments. Yeah, but yes, thank right. you. <laughs> Uh, Trencher1375 says, Piker just feigned maturity. As soon as he and see a documentary like yours, it's just straight back to ad hominem nonsense. He tells small-minded people what they want to hear, easy answers. I mean, I wish we had like a counter for how many ad hominem attacks there were in this uh, in this video. I, I, I lost count. It was a lot. Uh, Alex and Teus, hey there, gang. You guys know I love going off the deep end with my questions. Did you hear that Neuralink has been approved by FDA and will start using human trials? Not advocating for it, but wow. I did. I mean, yeah. I mean, if it helps people and it does something, I've heard that they're like projecting that it could maybe help people who are paralyzed or quadriplegic or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? If that if that solves that for people, absolutely go ahead and and do that. I think I get why people are nervous about it and the things that they're looking for as far as what possible pitfalls could be but there's so much technology that we've integrated with medicine in order to solve certain issues and if that's what this does then by all means if people need it do it by all means alex again says have you heard of all these curing benefits of Neuralink? i really do think that half the human that the half human half machine is inevitable i'm not trying to sound crazy I mean, I don't know. Uh, one time when Taylor and I were talking about it, he's like, a pacemaker is a machine that you've placed. Right. In order to, you that know. That guy made a good point. Help, yeah. <laughs> and then you hear with people who have like tremors and stuff. I knew, I had a patient at the uh, clinic that I used to work out before doing this job who got a surgery done uh, on her brain because she had really, really horrific tremors, just constantly tremoring all the time. And she came to the clinic after she had had this surgery and her head was essentially like open, open space because they had not closed it yet. And she opened it up and there was just wires all throughout her her head and, and her skull. And it was helping with her tremors. So her her doctor could electronically control these impulses that were being sent to her hands and her legs. and essentially stop that from happening and a lot of people would look at that and be like this is the transhumanist agenda and like it's so horrible look at her she looks like a cyborg or whatever but it's it's solving a a very difficult problem and it's not doing anything else it's not telling her how to think or how to feel or whatever you know yeah it's the classic problem with technology is just like you know it's going to allow us to do things that we haven't been able to do in the past but do we have the ethics and the wherewithal not to abuse that and use that in right. ways that are dehumanizing or that you know are slippery slope and can end in bad outcomes? AI is the same. So, but it's just the technology problem, the Jurassic Park problem, as we like to call it. Yes, my skin uh, is shiny, so I'm oil blotting it. For those of you who don't know, what okay. to do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I thought, it looks like a shiny. post-it note. You're just it, writing it a post-it. It literally note is a post-it note. Oh, okay. Wow. So well, there you go. You know. Um, this we're just we just really went chill now with you guys just blotting post its on our face. You know, I would use an today. actual oil blotter from Sephora, but conservatives don't shop there. <laughs> That's just what we need an alternative to uh, makeup <laughs> pads for what for drying pads. Yeah. Notes. Oh Lord. Um okay. Turd Rocket says Mahler's impression of Hassan making a point. Um uh uh I uh I mean uh like why uh 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 Mahler is one of the people on uh, Nerdrotic's uh, stream. I know that oh, much. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm sure he has his own content stuff, but that's where I, I've seen him. Oh, um, so. him out. so I know we've got a lot of people who found us through the collab with Nerdrotic. So we still love yeah. you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, no, this is my uh, Hassan transition. Um, uh, oh. uh, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Nick Tyler says the Belmont Stakes is this Saturday. I think it's a horse race. Uh, I'll be tuning in and asking for picks Wednesday. <laughs> Again, incredible documentary, Miss Epinobi. Thank Keep you. Keep putting in the true work. Hope to get to meet y'all one day. I'm glad you guys liked it. And if you actually want to see the documentary without Hassan's commentary, uh, which I urge you all to do, <laughs> go to PragerU.com and uh, you can check it out. The link is in the description down below. Yes. Uh, Michaela Harris says, I love your videos. If you ever, I wonder if you ever thought about putting out a list of books that have helped you learn and understand everything that's going on in the world. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that as a community post one of these days. Yeah. I like that. Right now I'm reading maybe fiction books. So I'm hunger games. Can't really give you much help. <laughs> yeah. Hunger games really changed my worldview. We're going to put that on the list. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually reading. I've I hadn't read actually read Tom Soul. I've seen like videos and podcasts and stuff, but I've I've been reading. Uh, what is it? The Conflict of Visions, and he's oh, he's a tough. He one just to gets read, to the bottom of things. He really does. He does. It's a lot. It's a lot of information given to you. Like I feel like I read three pages of his book, and I'm like, okay. By the end of the third page, I'm like, everything I just read on the first page is gone. There was so much information, but you get a general note for what he's talking about. So yeah, you got to like digest it. You got to like it's take a bite and then like really true. take time and internalize what he's saying. Uh, okay, Ricardo Seawerit C- says, uh, LOL is like all the universities in Cuba. So I guess that's oh, when we were talking institutional about capture by Marxism, perhaps, yeah. and indoctrination centers. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Viribus Unidas says, rarely will you find such unwavering devotion as a Sun Piker to the ad as Hassan Piker has to the ad hominem argument. Loved your documentary. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank I'm you. glad you liked it. Next time we'll do a uh, counter. Next time. <laughs> uh, Alexander Sides says the dissonance is cognitive with this one. This guy is such a pick me white knight simp, or should I say Caucasian knight? I don't know anymore. <laughs> but the chats just become like everyone who wanted to hate on Hassan. Just drop it in. And I'm kind of like... <laughs> We tried to, you know, take the high road a little bit in the commentary. Hey, free speech. Wheels are falling off. (laughs) You said (laughs) it not me. Fire with fire. You said it not me. I didn't say anything. (laughs) Yeah, we're just reading these. Yes. Uh, Dixon again says, I'm just going to call him Dixon. because. (laughs) uh, How dare you tease a Brett collab like that? This is your, our emotions you're playing with. Uh, maybe that was your Brett collab, guys. Amal and Brett just appeared in a video together, that so you don't have to ask happen. us every stream anymore. It did <laughs> uh, Luke Smart, here's 10 reasons to feel better about an irrelevant leftist streamer bashing you. Give 11 Canadian dollars. Oh, so you. I guess there's one extra for something else, but I appreciate figure it. that out later. Uh, <laughs> Alex again says, You know what's really telling. When the other side has nothing to say but insults because they can't actively dismember your can't yeah because they actively can't dismember your argument. Good job on the doc. Yeah, I'm like, dang, did we just catch him on a bad day? Maybe. Is he going through a breakup? <laughs> uh, maybe the food he was scarfing didn't yeah. taste very good, and he was mad at that too. <laughs> right, something like that. Uh, Alexander Sides just gives a super chat. Thank you for that. Viribus again says, random fact of history in 1787, the black royal fencing master and composer Joseph Bologna fought against royal spy master Chevalier Deon, mm. uh, considered the best female fighter in Paris, who was in fact a cross-dressing man. Okay. I love these Nothing new under facts. the sun. No, yeah. Leah just, Thomas's hero. We're just going back to tradition, as they say. <laughs> yeah. They're going to use that as some justification, like the uh, the, the two spirit thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Native cultures and before times had some people who wore women's clothes, exactly, and that means bro. that our archaeology is correct. I can't wait. Dow says Hassan is a capitalist that identify as a socialist. Changed my mind. <laughs> So you can identify as anything, so that's okay. Yeah, from, from what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, Alexander Sides, again, says, I like how he's bashing Daily Wire and Prager You like he has achieved anything by crying on his Twitch stream. I didn't say it. You said it. You said it. He does. I mean, 
he's he's got a substantive YouTube channel, but I think it's on Twitch is crazy. They like fifty thousand people watch that at the same time, which mm-hmm. does not give me a lot of hope for humanity. Nope. 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 Um, Dixon again. Did I miss it or did he just forget to accuse Jeremy of a sex offense? Do better, Hassan. Oh my gosh, he did. That was the one man that I think he missed in this video. We have to we have to reconcile that. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. He's not going to date you. <laughs> Uh, Marin C says, I lean more towards the left and he offends me. You cannot have a great defa- debate offending other people. You are the big L. Ooh. Facts. Saw a lot of L's in the chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Stephanie Fonseca says, he's proof that today you can be popular if you say anything, as long as it's vulgar but woke. Literally nothing that he said required any intelligence. Yeah, I think people just like ones who push the envelope and maybe say things that they're not comfortable saying publicly and the fact that he's on a stream gives you the feeling of maybe that he's saying it publicly uh, but he's not he's still in his house doing the same thing that everybody who's anonymous on twitter does so and i read some on some chat one of you guys said that he uh, he won't debate or is known for not being willing to do that which it's I weird because I've seen. True, I but... think i've seen clips of him on like jesse lee peterson's show i think i've seen that okay so. oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah well we'll see we'll um see. jimmy mapes says please send us on both a venti and a grande soy latte also i think he needs a blankie <laughs> you guys <laughs> you guys are having a field day uh, yeah <laughs> we uh, opened yeah, it. everyone's just blowing off steam after this yeah <laughs> uh, we, we put you through it for an hour so i guess <laughs> you know we gotta let you air out your grievances uh dean mccaskill says canadian super chat we're not all nuts up here hey good to know to know i know there's some good good ones over there e e uh egg 64 i'm a black man on the far left and supposed to hate you and yet here i am hearing you drop truth bombs yet again what can i say (laughs) (laughs) converting the masses no i'm not Mm -hmm. trying to convert y'all i'm glad if you're watching and you're you're left leaning and you enjoy the show that's great love it conversion therapy with amala (laughs) Uh, C2 Gaming, Hassan is a big, big, bigger bigoteer than all of the isms he claims we all are. This video is a prime example of cognitive dissonance. His grift is based on lies. Yeah, he's just, he just hates people. There's a lot of hatred. I felt a lot of hate. Conservatives just want to make racist Oreos. Yeah, They're right. like Oreos, but they're racist. Exactly. Like, got us, got us figured out. Wild. <laughs> uh... ZH, Amaleception, reacting to a reaction of her documentary. I thought about that. That was kind of funny. <laughs> You've seen uh, in, in Bo Burnham's Inside, if you guys have seen that, uh, where he does like the reaction to the reaction of the reaction to the reaction. It's like constantly <laughs> loops. It's a, it's a great video. Uh, yeah, that's that's how I feel today. <laughs> Tim Quattro, Quattro Chiochi. That is quite a, I don't know if that's a real last name, but that is intense. Uh, off topic, but I just watched your video talking about Tinder. I'm glad I met my fiance before it got so hard to find someone as a guy. By the way, the pickup Tinder. line was, do you believe in love at first swipe? Oh. As a dad joke fan, I may have used that, but that was a good one. <laughs> I, not... I never did. I, I'm not saying I did. But... I'm sorry. That That's a rough one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I can't sugarcoat it. Uh, well, my video talking about Tinder. I don't remember what video that was. Uh, I mean, yeah, dating's come up all the time. Dating apps. We got another dating fans, video coming out tomorrow. Stuff. Yeah. So stay so, tuned. Stay Back tuned. to regular scheduled programming <laughs> tomorrow. Right. right. <laughs> uh, Michelle M. Hey, Amelin Taylor, whoever's in the producer's bay. How are you going to do Scott, Scott like that? Scott was quiet today. He was quiet today. What's up, guys? Why are you so quiet today, Scott? Are you tired? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm recovering from He's last recovering. week. So, He's recovering. Yeah. T- Scott's got mm-hmm. a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only one with a baby in the, in the house. Exactly. <laughs> and also our uh, our system reset right before the show and Scott had to like crazily. He's always down to the down to the wire with uh, edits and we, we always put so much pressure all on the him. Time. Yeah, he was Just fixing life. all of our... <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm in this beautiful box up here, this bubble next to Amala's head because of Scott's Scott's uh, on the tightrope of life programming. <laughs> yeah, you need a post-it note over there. I need like a towel. To, uh, I'm yeah. sweating, sweating my butt it off. It's really over hot here. in here. Yeah. I might even turn on the AC because it's just hot in here. I don't, I don't even care. Uh-huh. We're almost done, guys. We're okay. Done. Unless you guys just uh, keep sending in super chats, which uh, you know, wouldn't that be crazy? We'll I'm not saying you should, but if you want to see us keep melting. 
Uh, Miss Marie Paris Ag says, I haven't watched the new documentary, but I'm super excited to. Every lefty sounds the same. Super angry and literally nothing of substance. Love your channel. Go check out the documentary, y'all. You should watch it if you haven't. And not through the lens of Hassan Piker. <laughs> Ruins it. Merci, Miss Marie. Uh, Ray Ruiz says, the communists are using wokeism to change things. They want everybody to think, think the same like droids. Dude, for real. I mean, you just heard it from the the uh, BlackRock from Fink. You heard him literally say, how do we I, get forced behaviors? Forced yeah. behavior. That's, Crazy. That, that's like, you know, if you had a video of Stalin, like, planning out the gulags, that's basically the same level. Like, I can't believe yep. that video exists and people are still like invested in black rock and stuff it's right. just nuts. right uh demented liquor says ooh, it's another edgy name yeah. uh i love how he says you guys are faking a live stream just because you're in a studio i've seen gamers stream in studio even i'd rather be i'd rather pet a rabid wolverine in a phone booth than listen to him <laughs> it's just a non it's just a non-argument what he says it's just a non-argument and it's like I don't know where where it comes from. Like, it's not. I think it's just a need to like pay yourself a compliment. Like, oh no, I'm the real original right. streamer person, and this person's kind of doing something that could be interpreted as similar to what I'm doing. And Ego so, and pride. Yeah. Ego and pride. Uh, and also, like, Brett never claimed to be a streamer. By the way, she. I mean, I think she used to do lives on YouTube, and now it's just a video. It's just right. that's just and her like, set. Like, and like what? Ma what does it matter whether or not she streams it live or she posts a video? Like, my goodness, are we? <laughs> Just armchair she experts. announced her show and was like, this is my set, which is inspired by Hassan Piker. Right. And it's like, we're not the center of the universe, man. Chill. Uh, Chill. Anyways. Man, we're almost done, guys. Uh, Alex <laughs> says, lol, no breakup. I en And I enjoyed my Culver's today. No breakup. I can't remember the breakup part, what that was referring to. I'm sorry, man. I don't man. remember He's, either. There's been a few sorry. of your questions today. Um, But but good for Culver's. Have you had Culver's, Amala? Is that the ice cream place? Yeah. I think I have had the it butter once burgers before. and stuff. It's pretty good. I think they have one in Florida and I've had them. Maybe. Possibly. Now I want cool. ice cream. <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, <man. laughs> cool. <laughs> I was just curious. Uh, Christian Templeton says, Amla, thanks for your live stream today. What fiction books do you read? Right now, uh, I'm reading. Let me look. What is it called? Uh, sorry. I think it's called happy place it's called happy place the only reason i downloaded this because i saw this girl on tiktok who was just like raving about this book she's like this book changed my life it's called happy place by emily henry i'm reading it so far it's all right it hasn't changed my life yet and uh, it's it's very it's an easy read so far if you are not looking to like read anything that's like super challenging it just seems like easy book we'll see i'll update you guys to the amala book club bonus yeah. content all right <laughs> Uh, Alexander Sides says, are reverse Oreos racist? Maybe so, because they're called uh -oh Oreos. Like, Oh, are they? Mm -hmm. Why Why is it a mistake that they're white? <laughs> exactly. Wow, we're on to something. We're on to something. This is another video. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Peter is my first name. That's a funny name. Uh, not Peter, but your name, your whole YouTube name. You know oh, that. okay. I was uh, <laughs> just bashing guys named Peter for no yeah. reason. Uh, no safe spaces. Uh, watch it. Jordan Peterson talking with Prager and Corolla. Yeah, that came out a few years ago. That was like right when I started at Prager U, like three years ago. Um, and I'm Corolla documentary. I don't think I ever watched it, but I don't, I've never uh, watched it, but I have heard of it. Don't tell my boss. Uh, Nikki Deering says, You are a beautiful and bright human being, Amala. I so appreciate your <laughs> common you. sense and empathetic perspective. As a Christian, I really appreciate hearing your perspective too, Taylor. Much love. That's so nice. Was I empathetic this video? I was struggling. I've got to be honest. I, I think you were <laughs> in good faith. Our, our audience wasn't as empathetic in these super chats, but uh, you could have stooped to you, his level, but you didn't. I maybe didn't want, I didn't I say his content that I'm watching is the same as him taking a video of him pooping and posting it on the internet. I did stoop a little bit. Sorry. A little bit. Yes. There may have been a, one F bomb <laughs> in there, but just one. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I think that's uh, that's it for Super Chats okay. today. Okay, well, wonderful. I'm glad. I hope you guys enjoyed this, <laughs> watching this, because it's never happening again. This was a one-time event, and uh, hopefully you were here for the moment where this happened live. And if not, you're watching it in post, and I appreciate you for sitting through this and making it this far. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow we're doing a video about a liberal woman who wants to date a traditional man who opens the door and, you know, lays his jacket out when there's a rain puddle, but can't find one who isn't conservative. Who would have thunk it? So we'll be reacting to that. We'll have a conversation. We'll love to hear about your experiences in the chat. Let me know how you felt about this video. And if you haven't watched Unwoke Inc., which is at PragerU.com, go to the link in my description down below to watch the Real Deal Holyfield documentary without Hassan Biker's nonsensical commentary on top of it. Guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we're live. That's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And we post videos for you guys every single day, so don't miss out.